Methodist Church, we'll leave the light on for you. And I know some of you is going to get out and mess your life up. Some of you young people are going to get out and do some stupid things. But when you're out there one morning and you come to and you don't know where you're at, you just remember, we'll leave the light on for you here. Amen. We'll leave the light on, brother. We'll leave the light on. My intention is for this little light here on the side of this road to shine, shine till Jesus comes back. We'll leave the light on for you. When you're having marriage trouble, we'll leave the light on for you. When the doctor says it's cancer, like she mentioned a while ago about Brother David, we'll leave the light on for you here at Shining Light. I want this church, but no matter how messed up your life gets, said, I know one place where I can go where I can hear some old preacher get up and say something about Jesus, and they'll, them people's got the light on for me. That's why you're here this morning, by the way. That's why you're here. I know why you're here. You're not here because of these beautiful facilities. Uh, you, you're not here this morning because it'll help your prestige in the community. You're not here but to up your reputation in town. You're here because you know we've got the light on, and we'll keep the light on for you. Amen. I want to say a few things this morning to our church and encourage us to keep the light on. And the first thing I want to say would be this. Uh, I was thinking this morning, I thought five years ago this morning, I, I was a nervous little guy. I come in here and I thought, Lord, is anybody going to be here or not? I didn't know how big of a crowd we might have. And boy, we had a good crowd. We had them little, them little chairs. You'll see them out there. They're back in the nursery now. They're, they're Fruit Loop chairs. They was, they're red and yellow and orange and they was real little. If you wanted to see a funny sight, you should have seen some of these people sitting on those little chairs. All right. All right. Now, everybody sit down and stay down now. Sit down and stay down now. Nobody else, okay? I need to be real still. Don't want to get nobody else moved, okay? And these little Fruit Loop chairs, you ought to have seen the little chairs are only this wide, and some of our people are a little more wide than that. It took two and sometimes three of them Fruit Loop chairs uh, uh, for some of them to get in. But, but boy, it was a blessing. We had a time. And I got to thinking about how fast time goes. And here will be another five and another five. We'll be going on to glory one of these days. I got to thinking about our church. Keep the light shining. We'll leave the light on for you. And the first thing I want to say is the Scripture. We'll leave the light on of the Scripture. That book said, Thy word is a lamp under my feet and a light under my path. That lamp under your feet is your low beam. That light under your path is the high beam. I'm glad we can still let this book shine right here at Shining Light Baptist Church. As a matter of fact, without that book, you have no light. As a matter of fact, without this book, all light you may think you have is artificial. This is the true light, that light of every man that cometh into the world. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word of God, and the Word that was light, and the life was the life of the light of me, and the Word was God's light, light's Word, all that thing. This light got a flashlight, blah, 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 blah. Hey man, that's it lighting you up, buddy. I got so much I'm trying to spit out all at one time, but I'm telling you, I'm glad we've got the Scripture. I'm glad we have the Scripture. I'm glad we still have the King James Bible to let the light shine. I'm glad that our Bible says in Daniel chapter 3 that the Son of God was in the fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in the fire, and they was in there, and they thought they was going to burn up. And that old king looked in there, and he said, hey, hey, come here a minute. How many guys we throw in that fire? And somebody said, three, king. And he said, well, there's one, two, three, four. There's four of them in there now. Something ain't right. And I'll tell you, Mel, they're walking around in there and they ain't hurt. And you know what that king said? He said, the fourth is like the Son of God. That was in Daniel. Now, if you have an NIV, it don't say that. The NIV said, a son of the gods. Many sons, many gods with a little G. You say, I didn't know that. That's what we're doing here. We're getting the light on for you. We got the light on for you. You need to know that. I'm telling you, I wouldn't have a Bible that said it was Ace of the Gods in the, in the fiery furnace. I, my Bible said it was the Son of God. You say, well, Jesus hadn't even come yet. It's all right. He's already the Son of God before He got here. That was a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ back there in the fire. Somebody said one time, they said, now there's no way in the world. That's a misprint. That's a mistranslation. Those, those King James translators just put that in there because they knew God was the Son. The Old Testament heathen king couldn't have known that God had a Son. Yes, he could have. He had an Old Testament. He knew the Psalm said, kiss the Son lest He be angry with you. He knew the Psalm said, what is His name? And 
and what is his son's name back there in the Old Testament. They knew God had a son. I'm telling you, I'm glad we got a Bible that says the right thing. I'm glad of the Bible that says El Hanan didn't kill the giant in 2 Samuel 21, 19, that David killed the giant. Do you know if you have an NIV, it says that El Hanan killed the giant in Second Samuel? I wouldn't have one. I was in a Christian bookstore one day, and I told this lady, she now, we have all these nice Bibles over here, and she said, this is the NIV, she said, this is what my pastor uses, and I'm getting ready to buy me one. And I said, did you know it said El Hanan killed the giant? She said, no. And I picked it up, opened it up, and showed it to her. She said, what is that doing? I said, I don't know, but I believe David killed the giant. And she said, that's what I believe. <laughs> she said, well, I'm not getting one of them. <laughs> and, and the truth is, my modern version of the Bible, they don't make it easier to understand. I hadn't been saved three weeks and I knew what thee and thou meant. Thee and thou ain't no big hurdle to try to get over. Lord, our grandmas and grandpas understood these and thous and half and with and with and whither and where withers and with alls, with alls and everything before we was ever born. They never even went to school. I'm telling you this morning, I'm glad we still got the old book to let the light shine. Say amen right there. We don't need to rewrite it. We need to reread it. We don't need a new Bible. We need to start living by the one we got. Amen. I'm glad we got the light on. I'm glad ours, ours says uh, the Father, Son, uh, and the Spirit are all one in First John 5, 7. I'm glad our Bible says that Joseph uh, said Joseph and his mother in Luke 30, 33 instead of, instead of his father and mother, like the NIV said. The NIV said Joseph was Jesus' father in Luke 2, 33. You don't want that. You don't want, get your Bible. It's got the light on. Get your Bible. It'll turn the light on in your soul. Shining light, brother. We're going to leave the light on for you by staying with the Scripture. I'm telling you this morning, my opinion don't mean anything. I go to a lot of churches, and I've been around the circuits, and I've been in a lot of churches where they say, bless God, we believe this, and bless God, we believe that. And you know what I've done over the year? I've sorted through about half that stuff, and half of it ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. Now, I'm going to tell you something this morning. I'm going to do you a favor. Now, I'm going to do you a favor, and you ought to push it. If the Bible don't make a big issue out of it, I ain't neither. I'm not going to get up here and cram my convictions down your throat. I, God told me to preach this book right here, and if that book can't keep you straight, my rules sure ain't going to. Amen. So I like that, do you? You say, but I want people to do this. Yeah, you know, your problem, you're more strict than God, brother. All that is is your opinion. I hear preachers preach, and they get up and say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I count one preacher, he said about a hundred times, I believe, I believe. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, who, what you believe? Tell us what thus saith the Word of God. That's what's going to be judged by. That's what's going to stand when the world's on fire. Amen? You say, well, then I believe. Well, that's your opinion. You're like armpits. Everybody got two. And they both stink. We don't want to know your opinion, and you don't know mine. I'm going to give you the, what the book says this morning. And I promise you, when you come to this church, you're going to get what this book says. Every bit of it. And there's not one verse in the Bible that we're going to be afraid to talk about or be ashamed of. You like that? That's light. Amen? We'll keep the light on for you. You see, in the day we're living in, you either believe the Bible's account of man or man's account of the Bible. I got so aggravated the other day. Man, I was watching that evolution debate. Man, them guys, I'm telling you, if that don't make you mad enough to want to preach, nothing will. You need to get them, those evolution debates. Old Kent Hovind, and I got to watching some of that stuff. And them professors got on there, and they literally made fun of the Bible. And I'm going to tell you something, kids. Don't you ever be ashamed to carry that Bible to school. And don't you ever be ashamed to tell your teacher that you believe God made the universe and the world, and it's all just like the Bible said. Well, you say, you believe God made the earth in six days? That's what he said. I don't have no problem believing that. You say, well, it's impossible. No, it's not. Not with God. You say, well, He couldn't. He said, don't you mean those days meant several million years each? The first day was several million. The second. Now, what that is, it's a Christian that's chicken to believe the Bible. And he wants to compromise and sort of believe both so he can fit in with both crowds. Now, I'm going to tell you, so you say, does it matter? Yes, it matters. He said the evening and the morning were the first day. You know, he made them plants and stuff on the third day and stuff like that. Did you know the sun didn't show up till the fourth day? And if you believe that junk, you believe that plants survived on the earth for millions of years without the sun? See the mess you get into when you don't believe the book? 
He made the plants one day, watered them, made the next day, made them come up and make them grow. Just like God said. I don't have a problem with believing that it's literal six days, literally six nights, 24 hour days. Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in a day? If it's 12 hours in a day, how many are there not? 12. That's 24. Evening and morning was the first day. Evening and morning was the second day. Don't you be ashamed of it. You say, well, but my professor, he brought a rock in and a fossil, and he said this fossil had been tested by carbon-14 and DNA and all this stuff, and he said this fossil was millions of years old. Yeah, you know, I've seen the Smurfs, too. I've seen the Smurfs. Uh, you know, and I've seen I've seen the Spider-Man, too. I saw him. He was on TV. And, uh, and uh, did you know, you say, but they said they're millions of years old. Listen, there ain't nothing that could have stopped God from making a 20-million-year-old rock a thousand years ago. Right? What if the Lord did it that way? What if 6,000 years ago God just said, All right, let there be a 20 million year old rock. Bang! There it is. And it's got strata in it and all these different geological things in it. And they come along and they say, Aha! Millions of years. And God says, I just put that down there because I know you're looking for an excuse not to believe the Bible. And if you're looking for an excuse not to believe it, He'll let you find one. And so these guys come out there, Oh, these 20 million year old rocks. You say, hey, what Would God really have done that? I can prove that He did it. Prove it. That he did stuff like that. You say, I don't think God would deliberately do that. I can prove it that he did it. God made Adam, right? Now, when God made Adam, he didn't make him a little baby. He made him a 30-year-old man, more than likely. Like in the image of Jesus Christ, that there, Adam, the first man, probably 30 years old. Don't know that for a fact, but he sure wasn't a baby. I mean, Adam didn't lay down and go, 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 go. I can't, you know, and then have Eve, you know, get married. Adam was a grown man. So when God the grown man, if you had met Adam one hour after he got, was created, and you'd have said, how old are you, Adam? I'm going to do a carbon-14 test on you. You would say, he's at least 30. But he was one hour old. You better watch him with that book right there. Cut your head off. I found out a long time ago, if this book says it, then that am it. It's over. Case settled, done, thought out of court. Let God be true and every man a liar. Say amen right there. I'm going to tell you something, brother. I, I got to reading about that, and I thought about them. To th you know, here's the way God does stuff. Just let me tell you how God does stuff. You know, they said the Big Bang exploded out here, and this bang, Big Bang went, BAM! And this ball split out of this. This is what they teach in high school. And they say, Metazoic, Predozoic period, this period, Piltdown man, Heidelberg man. They do that to impress you teenagers so you'll think, oh my goodness, they're smart. They know stuff that I don't know. Well, they've learned a few, uh, you know, French, uh, Italian, uh, German, uh, English words, you know, maybe that you've never heard. That don't mean they know what you're talking about. And they put that stuff up there, and you think, oh my goodness, that, that thing lived. And then there's this little bitty monkey. And then they got this little bit bigger monkey. And this little bit bigger monkey. And then a bit bigger monkey. And then Patrick Ewan. And then after that. And then after that. And then, that's right. That's what they believe. Don't you sit there and get mad at me. That's exactly what they believe. That's a bunch of bull, brother. That is not true. You didn't come from no monkey. I'm telling you, we, we, we didn't. My grandpa didn't swing by his tail from a tree somewhere. He probably swung by his neck in West Virginia. But I doubt if he swung by his tail, he didn't have one. I'm glad to say tonight, brother, we come from the hand of God. God made us. He created us. And we're made in His image. Just like God said we was in the Bible. Amen? I don't have a problem believing that. You know what they did? You know why atheists can't find God? Same reason a thief can't find a policeman. <laughs> he ain't looking for him. <laughs> That's right. God made man the dust of the earth. Uh, uh, they said this thing split out, and when the earth was spinning like this, and the, the Big Bang, all the planets spun out of there. And that's why they're spinning, rotating like that and going around the sun. Now, when you kids go to school and your biology teacher starts teaching that, raise your hand and ask them a question. And say, teacher, I want to ask a question. If there's nine planets in our solar system, and they're all spinning like they spun out of the sun there and split out here, why do two of them planets spin backwards? Isn't that an odd thing? Seven of them's going like that. And two of them's going wrong, 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 the wrong way. God spun two other way. 
just to have something to do. So skeptics that have something to break their fool necks on. God just does stuff like that. They can't explain that. There's no way. Let me tell you something else. They said for years and years and years, cosmic dust accumulated on the moon. There's little dust particles out in outer space, and it settles down on the moon. And, uh, and everything else out there that, that don't burn it up. And that dust settles on the moon. Well, they figured in 1969 when they went to the moon, because of the age that they believed of the earth and the moon, that there would be maybe several, maybe a hundred feet of dust on the moon. And literally, they believed this. Scientists believed that, that Apollo had its legs where they could, st- in case they went down in that dust, disappear when they land on the moon. Because there ain't no atmosphere up there, and so wind don't blow, and that dust just stays there all the time. Nothing disturbs it. So they figured when that, uh, that spacecraft came down, it would just sink because they figured it, it, uh, it gained like a, a hundredth of an inch a year, so I can't. And it just, and, uh, it get deeper and deeper and deeper, and there could be a hundred feet of dust on the earth figuring their age of the moon. And when they got there and landed on the moon, they hit ground, and there was one quarter of the inch of dust on the moon. And they wrote, they called them back to the only quarter inch of dust on the moon. Guess how long it takes they figured out to get a quarter inch dust? Six thousand years. Well, duh, we could have told them that. And they didn't report that. They don't put that in the textbook. Anything that's pro-creation, anything that's pro-Bible, they'll zap right out and not put in a textbook. Anything that looks like T-Rex or something like that, or something to turn it into something else, they'll gladly put that. They're trying to brainwash boys and girls. Don't you ever be ashamed to stand up and say, I believe the Bible and God made this world. We're going to let the light shine. We're going to let the light shine through the Scripture. We're going to let the light shine through the shout. Amen. We light on for you. You say, boy, ain't there no churches that believe in shouting no more? We'll leave light on for you. Amen. Did you know shouting is scriptural? Shouting is normal. Shouting is normal. You know, if somebody jumped up and took a shout and spell here this morning, there'd be people sitting right here this morning saying, oh my goodness, what's wrong with them? What is wrong with them? Can't they control themselves? Are they some kind of idiot? Are they some kind of fanatic? Listen, people, that's normal. People that are happy, shout. People that are happy, smile. People that got something great happen to them. It's natural to express your emotions. God gave us our emotions to, to, to worship Him. And listen, brother, I, I worry about people that go to a ball game, scream like a Comanche Indian, and then come to church and sit like a wooden Indian. They look like their mother just moved in with them. I I tell you, they look like they've been drinking lemon juice on the way to church. I'm sitting there like they're about to die. And listen, all, I mean, all we got's heaven. All we got's miss a ticket to miss hell. And we ought to be there. I'm glad we can leave the light on where we can still shout. And he's God. You say, well, you get awful excited while you preach. You ain't seen nothing. It's dead in here this morning. I tell you, brother, the other day, I saw something on TV that I ain't seen in years and years and years and years since I was a little kid. I watched, you're going to think I'm awful, but for some reason or another, it's on TV somewhere, and I watched about 10 minutes of The Price is Right. Honestly, I didn't know The Price is Right still come on. That dude has got to be 110 years old. He was old and gray when I was a little kid. And he was standing up there, and it had that same exact music. Had them same old girls sitting up there, a new car, and they sent up there and go. They got that. They're, they're froze. They froze their face and that smile like that, you know, and they pat it and grin like this, you know. I said, Lord, I ain't seen that in a hundred years. I, I mean, I only ever watch, you know, I, I watch Fox News and a bunch of stuff like that, but not the price is right. And oh, old Bob, he sit up there and he, he come up here, brother Ray. Don't you be brother Bob here or Bob? Uh, he just said, come up here, yeah. He's been eating a little bit since I saw him the other day. Uh, but, but here he is. He holds that microphone. You ever seen that microphone he holds? It's real long and skinny. It looks, looks like, uh, he holds, you know, you know who Bob Barker is, don't you? Okay. All right. You're Bob Barker. And you know what? Uh, he got there and he'd say, ladies and gentlemen, he said, ladies and gentlemen, and I sat there and watched, I said, I ain't watched this a long time. And people sitting there in the, off, in the audience, they had these stupid looking Mickey Mouse ears, you know, and, and a big shirt says, pick me, Bob, you know, and, and stuff like that. Bunch of fanatics. Amen. 
can't believe them Bucks fans. Reminds me of them Duke fans and them Carolina fans. I seen one guy, one of them ball games, had a basketball go sticking out of his head. Really, he did. He had a basketball go sticking out of his head, man. I mean, and they talk about us being fanatic. Listen, that the world is trying to kill our shout in the house of God, and I don't intend to let the shout die out. We got something to shout about, and we're going to keep the light on for you with a shout. Amen. You say, well, churches just ain't built on shout. No, but it sure is good to worship God and let her rip once in a while. Amen. You know how I know it's right? Because of the Bible and because it's normal. In the Bible, they shed and fell on their face when they worshiped God. In the Bible, they raised their hands, they said amen, and they fell on their face. And if you go to a church where nobody ever raises their hands or says amen real loud or falls on their face, you go to an anti-scriptural church. I didn't write it. I'm just preaching it to you. I didn't say everybody in there is wicked. I just said that's the way they worship God in the Bible. Somebody said, well, you're supposed to worship God according to the dictates of your... Show me that in the Bible and I'll give you my Hershey bar. Come on. I'll, I'll give you something else. I'll give you something else. My kids went to New York and all I got is a stupid Hershey bar. Uh, but let me tell you something, brother. Listen. Oh, Bob, he is up there. And this guy pulls out a card and he says, All right, Susie, Janie. Where's Janie? You want to come on down? No, no, no. Right, you got, now you gotta do it like they do it. You gotta do it like that. Alright. Here it is. Janie Martin, come on down! You're on, Janie. Like they do on TV now. You gotta do like they do on TV. Ah! Yeah, there, like that right there. Come on down here. That's the first time I've ever seen her shout. Yeah. All right, you two love birds. No holding hands up here. <laughs> I would tell you how they met, but it's rated X. R. I'll tell you a little bit. Ray was, he was dating this other girl, but in the back, he was holding her hand like this. He was. He really was. That's awful. That was before he got saved. That was before he got saved. He was a player, son. I ain't kidding you. This man right here. <laughs> He still got it too. You better watch out for it. Uh, but listen, he called her, and this girl, I saw her. She ran down there, looks like Janie did, and he said, and she was going like this. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Just like that. And she ain't even won nothing. I was sitting there thinking, Lord, calm down, girl. I mean, chill. It's going to be all right. She was just jumping up and down, and he said, Now, Janie, here's what he does. He said, Now, Janie, what if we were to open that curtain over there? And you saw underneath this curtain, <laughs> and it said, it opened up and it said, a brand new Jeep. And there was this Jeep Cherokee there, and she flipped out. She went, oh, 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 like she's passing out, man. I mean, she's doing that kiss right here. I thought, Lord, have mercy. And it showed her friends back there. And they were all going out just hugging each five, you know, and everything and everything. Listen, if you went to First Baptist Church this morning, and all in there and said, it's good to be saved, ain't it? Give them a high five. They'd think, oh, God, goodness, can't you people, what's wrong with you people? Are you some kind of fanatic? No, we're just normal Christians. We're just normal Christians. Let me tell you something, brother. Listen, if you got a new Jeep, if I got a new Jeep, I'd shout. I got a little bit in sitting out there this morning I ain't supposed to know about. And I'm going to shout when they tell me I'm getting it. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something, brother. Let me tell you something, brother. I'm telling you, I would shout. You give me a new Jeep, I'd shout too. But I'm telling you today, brother, we got something more than a Jeep. Are you crazy? We got our names written in the book of life in heaven and ain't enough devils to take it out. We're going to miss hell, not burn. Well, I'll tie the roof off this place once in a while. We'll keep a light on for you. Keep your, keep your priorities straight. And boy, oh, she, I, I think she won that Jeep. He said, now if you get this number, Janie. <laughs> He's, number six, would you like to change the next number? He said... Is it a C? Yes. Is it an O? Yes. She only likes three more. Is it an M? Yes. Janie, if you get this one right, the Jeep is yours. <laughs> uh, she's getting excited and she ain't getting nothing. Uh -uh. 
Uh, Janie, if you get this right, you're the winner. Shall we have her to open her? Whoever does. All right, open it up. Boy. Ding! She went and everybody in there went crazy. People was jumping up and down. Yes! I mean, they was doing this like character. Listen, if you go to a church where nobody ever does that, something wrong in that church. I don't care if they do it for a new car. I don't care. You give me a new car, I'd shout too. But don't you tell me that we have a right worshiping our God who saved us and came put our names up under His birth. Brother, we ought to shout and worship Him. We'll leave a light on for you. Okay, y'all can sit down there just a minute. You might win something else in a minute. Hey, Amen. You get something for participating. I'm going to hurry. Lord have mercy, it's time to eat. Leave the door closed. We don't want to smell that, that food. I want to say lastly, we'll leave the light on being soul winning. And soul winning. Keep giving out tracks. Keep them buses rolling. Brother Danny Gass is two dollars and forty cents a gallon. And yeah, one little boy or girl is worth ten thousand times every bit of gas in this world. Where's my girls this morning? There's one. There's two. There's three. Where's the rest of them? They must be in junior. Oh, there they are. Y'all stand up. All of y'all with your little aqua dresses on. Stand up, Monica. Stand up, Angel. There's one, two, three, four. Where's the other one? We've lost one here this morning. There she is. Stand up, Mama. <laughs> Listen. I went over and visited him yesterday. Them's my little bus kids right there. They come with me on Sunday morning. I only have five. I don't have 11 of them up there, but the only five come this morning. They're worth every bit of gas we ever spend on them. Ain't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. She's worth every bit of gas. Angel, now you can ask Mom. Every Sunday morning when we pull up the driveway, this little girl comes out. I think Tuesday's her birthday. She'll be 15 years old. She'll be 15. Is that right? Is that right, girls? Angel will be 15? Ain't that right? Ain't that? And look how happy she is today. I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. And there's Lily. I didn't know Lily made it. And EJ. Stand up, Lily. Stand up and wave at everybody. Come on. Stand up and wave at everybody. He's a, he's a good boy. There's Lily. Mama brought him this morning. And he's got one little than him named Dee Dee. And then I got another named Pee Wee. That's the truth. That's the truth, ain't it? You run out of names after about the line, man. You just whatever you see, just name them out when you come out. <laughs> Lily, he's my buddy. You mean to tell me Lily ain't worth keeping the light on? All you bus workers that might be discouraged, you've got knocked bus ministry. I'm going to tell you this. Now, I was going to say a bunch more stuff, but let me say this. My heart has been burdened just like yours has for that girl down there in Aruba, Natalie Holloway. I mean, you can't turn the can't pick up a newspaper without seeing that girl that went to Aruba on a high school trip and took off with some strange boys. And last anybody seen her, she was out on the beach with that Vander Sluter, whoever he was. And he was 17. And that girl disappeared. And there's been a national outcry. We even sent a research team from Texas down there. They're going over every nook and cranny, going into holes, going into ravines, going into fish ponds, going to the jungles, searching the bottom of the ocean. They're going crazy searching for that girl. Now, I'm, I'm not belittling that, but if it was one of my girls down there, I'd do the same thing. One of my girls was down there lost, so I'd be down there in Aruba right now and saying, everybody come help us find her. I'm, I'm not making light of that situation. But what bothers me is everybody said, let's go find that girl, let's go find that girl she's lost, let's go find that girl that she's lost. Listen, there's 10 million teenage girls just like that lost in sin. And most churches today get no care whatsoever. There needs to be some churches that will take it just as seriously finding that teenage girl out there in that trailer park as they're taking finding Natalie Holloway. I'm not, I'm not making light of that case at all. I, I commend them for what they're doing, really. I do. But we ought to be even more concerned about a teenage girl in our community who's not.